What I am thinking about constantly as an instructor is trying to give you different perspectives on which to see the issues that we're talking about. And in any one class, we only have 75 minutes. So we're limited in the number of perspectives that we can take. Any topic we talk about in this class, really, it could be, we, we could talk for an entire semester to cover the many, many different perspectives. There are thousands of books that have been written on this issue and thousands and thousands of articles. And scholars spend their entire lives thinking about this issue. And we're gonna talk about it now in about 70 minutes. And it's highly politicized, and there are so many different ways to approach it that there's no way to be thoughtful, even-handed, and fair. The only thing that we can do is, that I can do, is try to be a little more thoughtful and a little more even-handed and a little more fair to give you some different ways to see some things. I'm gonna bring them out two at a time for the whole class, and we're just gonna keep switching. So two, two of them will come out, and I'm gonna talk about something, I'm gonna send them, have them go back out in the hallway, and then the two other people are gonna come, and I'm gonna talk about the same issue. So we're talking about immigration today. I've broken immigration up into five different subtopics, so to speak, okay? And I'm gonna say something about each subtopic, and with the first group, each time they come out, I'm gonna take the position that we really need to get immigration under control unfettered or, or uncontrolled immigration can undermine the social order. I'm gonna take that basic position. Then the second group's gonna come out and I'm only gonna take the second position. I'm gonna take the position that, hey, immigration is a net positive and immigrants are really good for the social order wherever they, they are, okay? One of the things that's pretty obvious to me is that Ill illegal immigration is illegal. Like, it's a crime, right? It's a crime to enter any other country, any country anywhere. I don't know a single country that you can enter without permission and without papers and go into that country somehow and stay even for a short period of time without being documented in some way, but it's criminal, right? There are crimes on the book that like you can't do that. And if you do commit that crime, then you should be arrested. Like it's pretty basic, right? And you should, would be sent back to wherever you came from because this is the idea, you're breaking the law. But for some reason, people like this who are part of this movement to say, we need to do something about immigration, like somehow they get like thrown to the dogs or something, like somehow they're bad people. Like it's easy to look at these folks and say like, oh, these are like racist, white people who just hate immigrants. It's like, well, hang on a second, man. Like, maybe they're just talking about legality. If people were like shoplifting or stealing bikes on the street or something, and they're saying like, hey, you can't steal that bike, it's a crime. You can't enter a country illegally, it's a crime, right? And it's a bad idea because you don't want people in your country who are undocumented. Like nobody wants that. You need to know who's where and what's going on. That's just kind of the nature of things in any society. This is an example of a, a protest that happened in Miami a number of years ago uh, of people supportive of the rights of undocumented immigrants or I I illegal immigrants. Many, if not most of the people in this photo are undocumented without papers. So the question is like, well, why don't we just go in and arrest them? Like, this is a problem for society. It's a problem for all of us to have a society in which we are not addressing this issue. Like, it really leads to, leads things to fall apart, okay? So people will say, hey, you can't control undocumented immigration, right? Or illegal immigration. If people want to come, they're going to come. If people are hungry enough or needy enough or wanting enough or just desiring enough, they're going to come. They're going to get here somehow. Look, if we go back to 92 and we see this number, look at, this is the number of Border Patrol agents, right? And look at how the number start to go down as soon as Border Patrol agents go up, which means that if we actually try to control this flow of illegal immigrants, we can do it. I think a lot of people that are against um, undocumented immigrants and like having them stay in the country. I'd say in my experience of like seeing those people that it's not primarily the legality that's being concerned. It's like the effects from those people staying in the country, whether that's like economically or culturally. Meaning that people who are 
really crit critical of the immigration flow. They're critical for other reasons beyond the legality. Okay, all right, that's cool. People that are like only concerned with the legality, I think like there needs to be some empathy involved because these people are, like these undocumented immigrants realize that there is a system that they can use, but the process is so long and strenuous. Yeah, I got you, but listen, man, if you have, for example, if you've got your, if someone takes your bike because they need a bike, because they need a bike to get to work out at Walmart on North Atherton, it's like, do you have, em it's like, hey, I have empathy, man. They need a bike. They got to get out there. Like, there's, at what point does the empathy start to say, hang on a second, man? Well, I'd say, like, I don't know if that's analogous because these people, they're, like, fleeing conditions All right. where they're, like, in danger, like, seeking asylum. And it's like, you think everybody is I'd say in danger? Maybe not, obviously not everybody, but I'd say the vast majority of. Where, how do you know that? How, wait, how do you know? So I just want to ask you a question. How do you, where did you come up with that idea? How do you know that to be true? Well, I don't know for sure, but okay. from what I've seen, like stories. Of okay, all right, fleeing, I got like, you. Trying to cross the border to escape violence from their home country. Okay, all right. Anaya, what, do you, what about you? Um, to go off what he was saying about the legality and how <laughs> oop, they don't have empathy. I won't say don't have empathy, but there should be some empathy aspect in it. And some people are blindsided and everyone's in danger and everyone's fleeing because they're in danger. And it is hard to tell if everyone is in danger, but I feel everyone has a reason. Yeah, but right. And so do all the people who haven't come. I mean, when do you stop, right? At what point do you say like, okay, we got to put the walls up now. Like, do you close the door, right? Like everybody in this class has a reason to show up with five minutes left and get full attendance points. And we cut it. We're just like, no, you can't do that. We're not giving you credit. You weren't here. But I came in 10 seconds after you closed the attendance thing. Ah, whatever, man. That person was 12 seconds. That person was 15 seconds. When do we stop it? So that would be my question. When do you stop? Just say, okay, but enough. Because there's always more people, man. There's always thousands and millions more. So when do you stop? Honestly, I don't know. It's hard. <laughs> Yeah, it's a tough question, right? Yeah. All right. Okay. You know, we have this undocumented immigration flow that's coming into the United States, and it's really difficult to cut it off. It's difficult to slow it down. It's not coming from Africa or Asia, because in order to get here from Asia, in order to get here from Africa, like, you've got to get on an airplane. And so you, it's really easy to stop people at the borders and like check their papers and see what's going on. But coming across the border from the South is very, very difficult. And, and it's hard and we just have these immigration flows and we don't stop it for some reason, right? And do you ever wonder like, why don't we stop? Why don't we arrest undocumented people and send them back? Do you ever wonder that? Was your dad undocumented by the way? Yeah, so my dad did cross the border illegally. Um, he came, obviously, from Bolivia with a couple of siblings, and then he went to New Mexico for a little bit. Why'd he come? Just to, like, work, to provide for his family back home. And good thing he did, because here you are. Well, do you ever wonder, like, why we don't just round people up and send them back home? It's really easy, right? I mean, you can see, it's not difficult to find undocumented workers, man. Do you ever wonder that, bro? No. Yeah? Not at all. Yeah. Do you see undocumented workers? I work with undocumented workers. Yeah. Have you ever wondered, so you never wondered like why, but dude, they hear, please, we know who they are. Like, it's really easy to find them. Just like, like, dude, you can, you're here illegally, send you back home, right? I mean, yeah, it's easy to say that. Yeah, but it's not. I don't think it's easy to actually do that. Because? Because, I mean, once people have a footing in this country, how hard it, like, the moral of a person shouldn't just want to send them back to their home, like where they came from. Yeah, but, okay, all right. Yeah, that is a question, right? But there's another, there's another issue, right? For example, so federal law states that state and local enforcement authorities may only hold people on immigration detainers for 48 hours. Like, this is the vast majority of that law enforcement personnel can only hold undocumented immigrants for a very short period of time. So it makes me wonder, are we really interested in stopping the flow of undocumented immigration? Like, are we really interested? Because you would think 
the very people who are most likely to run into people who are undocumented or illegal would be the very people who we would deputize to say like, hey, you gotta put them, they're here without papers, you gotta put them in jail, put them somewhere so the immigration authorities can come and do what they have to do and check their paperwork and send them back home or whatever they have to do. But we don't do that. And you you wonder, why is that? So my question is, who has more power? You have citizens over here, including people are you know, saying like, we should send people back home. You got citizens over here. And then you have like business and the owners of the means of production. And what they want is cheap labor. They want a, la- a labor force, a workforce, right? They want to make sure that whenever they, have, they need workers for a job, they can always find workers for a job. So we can just like turn off the flow of immigration. We can we can open the flow of immigration and we can ensure like, hey, we need more farm workers. We can make sure that we can move people. Um, just open it up a little bit. So let me grid, just let more people cross. And then right now, and then suddenly we get to a period where, ah, oh, we have too many workers. So it's like, no, 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 migra. You right, the, on the bor- migration, uh, like on the border, right? Border patrol, like close it down a little bit, like whatever, but we don't, but it just keeps going. And it makes me think the people that are running the shop must for some reason want to have this unfettered immigration flow, including undocumented workers. Because otherwise we would just pass a law that says you can't do that. Like, or we would tell these, like, uh, the, the authorities, the people who would be deputized, the people who are going to rent it to folks, like, pick them up off the streets and do something. It's just bizarre to me that we just let it happen. And by we, I mean the people that are making the laws and enforcing the laws, because it's not the three of us. It's somebody else. It's people that are like holding the strings up here and they don't. So we got this constant immigration flow and we got about 11 million undocumented workers in the United States right now, undocumented people. Personally, I think like the immigrants and so you're talking about undocumented workers. I think they're like, driving our our economy essentially like without them we wouldn't like these big businesses like you're saying and they want them to come in and get the cheap labor regardless of whether it's cheap or not i feel like especially after covid americans just really don't want to work and if and the people complaining about these the the illegal immigrants coming here seem to just be the people who don't want to work themselves so i don't really see how like we don't agree with the businesses wanting to pull them in here and give them a better opportunity when the Americans don't want to take it when it's right in front of them. Yeah, it makes sense to me. Maybe like, when you say Americans don't want to work, I'm not sure. You might be pushing it a little hard. but Not, not don't want to work, but like, I don't know, I guess our, our little pushback from harder labor jobs now that they can see that things are online and they have better access to technology and internet and everything. And Well, well it's like if you, if you get shipwrecked and you land on an island in the middle of the ocean, you're going to figure out how to get food. You're going to work really hard to figure out how to get food or you're going to die. And so, like, but a lot of folks, if like, if you don't need to do that, you're not going to do it. Do you have any thought? Um, I feel like at the end of the day, as long as you're paying your taxes, like, then you're fine to live here. Because I feel like at the end of the day, like, everyone just wants to make money here. Uh-huh. So even if you're undocumented or not, like, if you're working and you're paying and helping the government that way, then I think people just look past it. Like, it's whatever. Okay. All right.